Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is November 21st, and right now we're looking at that mid-level water vapor loop. You can see the initial stages of some of this precipitation moving into western BC. It's going to take its sweet time moving a bit further south, but we got a stronger system coming in Sunday, and even a stronger system as we go through next week, most likely. And we do have the potential for some lower elevation snowfall as we go through next week east of the mountains. And then we'll take a look at the extent of forecast because people continue to show some fantasy forecast forecasts and colder air trying to drive down across the west coast of north america we'll take a look at the latest on that here more as we go through the video this morning so taking a look at that storm across southern california we're at about 30,000 feet up in the atmosphere, about 300 millibars. You can see that jet stream pointed into British Columbia. So as we scroll on into the next few days, eventually as we go through the day Sunday, right there, this kink in the jet stream, that's our first system right there. And then we're going to get a stronger system probably as we go on in towards next week and towards Thanksgiving as well. We'll show you more on that here in a moment. But if we take a look at integrated vapor transport, you can see that kind of pouring into some of Vancouver Island and eventually down into Washington, trying to get down towards the Oregon coast as that system moves through on the day Sunday. Fairly weak atmospheric river associated there, but then you can see this deeper storm system out over the Pacific Ocean here approaching as we go on into the day before Thanksgiving coming up there. So yeah, fairly decent frontal system would be associated with that. We'll watch that storm system closely. And if we look at the maximum forecast AR scale, you can see there is some three in there as well, but overall this is you know fairly a weak atmospheric river. We're not looking at any flooding potential really with this one as it's rolling in. Now, if we take a look at the precipitation, uh, and also shows precipitation type as well, but you can kind of see as we're going on in through the day today, some of that precipitation moving into British Columbia, clipping maybe northern zones, northwest Washington, maybe some of the north Cascades there a little bit. But you can see for Seattle and Portland, it's taking its sweet time for this frontal system to come in here. But then when it does on Sunday, it brings some precipitation down through western Oregon. That one slides through, and then we've got kind of a chillier air mass that's going to come across the region here. And then uh, as this next storm system comes in, some of this snow may be getting down towards I-90 or Highway 2 in Spokane as we go on in through the day on Tuesday. And you can kind of see that kick across the Idaho Panhandle and portions of western Montana as well. But yeah, this could be a, a pretty rainy pre uh, precipitation maker here for the Pacific Northwest. Kind of a warm frontal feature hanging out for a bit as this deeper low approaches Vancouver Island as we go on in through the day, the day before Thanksgiving. And this would be right about uh, 10 p.m. on Wednesday night. So if we take a look at wind speeds here as well, we'll scroll through here and we'll see that frontal system. There it is coming for us on Sunday. Uh, just a little bit of some blustery winds, nothing too extreme. And then the stronger storm starts to arrive as we go on in through next week. And you kind of see it in the offshore waters right there, trying to move up towards Vancouver Island. Now, if we look at a positive snow depth change in inches, we'll scroll across the region here. And you'll notice as we go on in through Tuesday, we start to pile up the snow a little bit more for some of the Cascades. So not a bad a bit of a snowmaker there. And you can see, again, the I-90 Highway 2 snowfall potential here. And then uh, for Spokane, there that's on the day Tuesday and then Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. Some decent snows across the Rocky Mountains. There are some of western Montana getting hit as well. And if we zoom in a little bit more, just kind of highlighting eastern Washington here, you can kind of see the potential for it getting down towards I-90. This is accumulated positive snow depth change in inches. This is not a cherry pick look at things here. So this is what you could expect on the ground. It does show some slick spots down there for I-90 and Spokane is a bit further here north. And there's the Idaho-Washington border. So maybe a few inches there. And you can also see some decent amount for Stevens Pass and Snoqualmie Pass as well. So if we scroll through the day Tuesday, you can see that snowfall building across some of the Cascades there. So you got to watch Tuesday, Tuesday morning, Tuesday afternoon for some winter driving conditions. And and of course, you know, when you run into this dense fog, it is that time of year, you know, use your low beams, slow down, don't stop and just kind of give yourself more time to get your, to your destination. This is National Weather Service Portland. Also talking about the sneaker wave activity. This goes all the way on in through this weekend here. Razor clam diggers, beware. So winter travel at times next week. Spokane National Weather Service continues to talk about this. And again, there's low confidence in this right now, but I will be watching it closely. So stay tuned over the next few days. Now, freezing fog advisory. Again, that's one of the threats here at this time of year as well. You can get some of the radiational cooling and the fog sets in. And you get some freezing fog out there as well. So heads up for that. You can see it affecting places like Pasco, Tri-Cities, or Hermiston Connell as well. Now, if we look at daily two meter minimum temperature, this is for tomorrow morning, Saturday. And I chose Celsius here because when you see this, what is this, the white line there or the white coming up there or whatever you want to call it, the, the silver 
that is when you're below freezing. So if you go through Sunday morning, there's Monday morning, Tuesday morning, you kind of see how that colder air is in place by the time you get towards Tuesday morning. So that's why that lower elevation snowfall threat does exist. We go Wednesday morning, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then maybe some cooler air right at the end of the month, trying to work its way into the region here. But again, a lot of uncertainty on how this is going to unfold. More on that here in a moment. And if we take a look at the next six days precipitation totals here, you can see the rain shadowing, generally speaking, to the towards the uh, you know the east portions of the Cascades, you get that rain shadowing. You see Seattle 1.22 by the time you go towards Wednesday night, with still more yet to come. And the lion's share of that across some of Southwest BC, Vancouver Island, some of the coastal range, not doing too bad in Cascades also. So if we take a look at what you might be seeing, uh, some people are showing this still on social media sites. So this is the GFS, and, and when you look at the GFS, what I use the GFS for is just to kind of look for agreement with the European model. When the GFS is off on its own, you kind of really discard it almost entirely. So going on in towards, uh, this is about November 27th here. Now we go on in through the 28th and you can see this colder air starting to build up across Northern British Columbia. That would definitely bring some colder air back down into the region, Arctic air seeping into some of the Pacific Northwest. But I got to warn you here, the European artificial intelligence are not showing it. They are better models here. So really when people are showing this on social media sites, you pretty much just check back here daily and I'll let you know when the chances start to increase for this. But right now, when the GFS is on its own, it's the outlier, you pretty much just completely throw the model out. For example, if you look at the artificial intelligence ensemble, which has largely been the best performing model, we'll scroll out in here and you can kind of see these systems move through. And then we go on in towards Thanksgiving weekend. And you see that cold air? Did you see it bunch up across the interior of British Columbia? No, you didn't. Just the very smallest amount of some colder air. The bulk of it stays east of the Rocky Mountains as we go on in towards the end of the month. So when the artificial intelligence starts showing it, then you know to start getting a bit more excited. Or even if the European were to show it a little bit more here as well, which I'll show you right now. We'll scroll out towards that time frame, and you can see that colder air again. The bulk of it, just a little bit of that, leaks down into British Columbia. So we got to watch it fully because maybe something would change. And you know, but again, the artificial intelligence it's not showing it just yet. And a bulk of that cold air stays east of the mountains, but some of it does seep down across into the portions of the Pacific Northwest. But by no means is that an Arctic blast. Now, however, if we look at the extended forecast, it continues to show that cooler than normal here across portions of Western Canada and some of the Pacific Northwest. But again, this is just a seven day running total here. And again, you're just kind of looking at tea leaves at this point. It's nothing to get too excited about just yet, but you can kind of keep some of that hope in the back of your mind that maybe we'll get some snowfall back down into the region here, into the lower elevations like Seattle or Portland for the snow lovers at some point this winter. And you can kind of see the heights a little bit above normal heights. They're out over and south of the Aleutian Islands. Kind of a La Nina flavor there with that troughing there, maybe close enough to the Pacific Northwest to allow for some Arctic air to get down into the region at times. And if we take a look, <clears throat> just entertainment purposes only, you can see the control run as you go through January 4th has nothing at all for SeaTac, but the ensemble members do have some, and the mean is right around five inches of snowfall. But that's a 10 to 1 ratio here, so whatever would fall would probably be more like a couple inches. But again, that's just something that I like to look at just to kind of entertain myself when I get bored. But you can see there's 100 ensemble members on the European extended run. And you can kind of see the temperatures as we go through the next 46 days or so. You can see the downward trend, of course, as we head on in towards December and January. But again, no big signal there for any Arctic air getting down into the region. But we'll continue to watch that, of course. And uh, yeah, check out the Patreon page. Hopefully you guys are having a good day. We'll do this all again tomorrow. We'll check everything out. We'll get to the latest on what the snowfall potential is, including across portions of the mountains. What kind of precipitation? Do we have any wind threat here across the Pacific Northwest? All good questions, and we'll try to answer that. And hopefully I will see you guys in the next forecast.